Hey, good morning. I'm a little early this morning. I'm uh, I'm at uh, the office manager's house. Um, a little early. Uh, we're going to San Antonio for training this morning. Um, the um, so I was thinking this morning about um. Moses and um, how he had to relearn the Hebrew language and chisel it into the, these tablets, these stone tablets up on the mountain and um, probably had to chisel out the stone tablets too, right? And then uh, I'm like, how do you do that? And then I realized, you know, he keeps saying, you know, he came down and his face was all white and, and like shining like, um, you know, kind of like, like real bright, like horns of light are coming off his face, right? And God was in him. So if God was in him, he can do anything, right? And, um, and that's how it happened, right? So, could you imagine God being like, just like so frustrated trying to teach somebody, let me, you know, so he gets in him and does it through him, right? So that's kind of what came to me this morning. And, uh, <laughs> isn't that amazing? I never thought that my any time in my life ever, right? But that makes sense now, right? Um, so when God's working through us, we can do amazing things. And learning a new language and, and um, you know, you know, carve it into a stone tablet. That ain't too much for God. We know that, right? And uh, the fact that God could be in us, that's something else. Um, there's interesting things happening. Um, it really frustrated me. When uh, I saw that that um, there were so many people in our ministry that didn't vote, they didn't didn't change their citizenship from um, California to to Texas and register to vote and vote, and um, one of the ones in the house that um. You know, didn't do it. Somebody got in his dish. Somebody gave him a little talking to. And uh, he pretty much repented. He's going to do it. And I see there's, um, from my background, you, you, you can't be incongruent about things. You can't um, say you believe one thing and then, and then, not take action on that belief or you know you know yeah, so so you're either now I can see people who or maybe aren't where they need to be and working on it okay progressing in that direction I can see that and it can't happen all at once right but just flat not do it or you know I've been praying praying Jesus will take care of it you know and then I'm like here I come right there's um there's a waiver for um people who overstay their visas and I've read through it and um at first, it looks like, you know, only if they've got, like, a family member that needs them to survive, right? But then you keep reading, and if you apply for the waiver, <clears throat> right? Um, and so since COVID, they've made, um, they've made uh, um, accommodations 
for COVID, people who come here from other countries and overstayed their visas because of the COVID situation, right? They are they are given um, um consideration, right? They got to go back and get their their visas. Now, no, now I turned them on to these um, immigration attorneys, and uh, they're saying, oh, no, just stay illegal until they call on you." Now, what happens if you're from you're coming across the border from Mexico or a South American country? You can come over here, and they set a court date. They're so backed up, you never get your your court date, and at your court date, you're um. So until then, they give you actually uh, a TIN number so you can actually work for that. So I don't know why that wouldn't work for people coming from Australia. But um, I'm not the one having to go to the, state, or the uh, immigration attorney and ask these questions. Maybe somebody should. All right. Well, I'm going to go in and let them know I'm here. Have a great day. Saturday. Bye-bye.